My name is Kate, and today I'm going to talk to you about my autum uh, uh, mm. I almost said autumnal TBR. <laughs> today I'm going to be taking you through my autumn TBR featuring paranormal urban fantasy, mystery thriller, dark romance, and new adult college romances. So I am super excited for this video. I also have a corresponding blog post that has links to all of the books um, and a little bit of more of an in-depth explanation if you want to check it out. The link will be in the description box below. New Adult is kind of just something that I like to grab and read when the mood strikes me. Um, so there's two on my TBR that I definitely want to make sure that I get to this fall, but other than that, I'm just going to kind of let the mood move me uh, in terms of what I pick. The first is going to be The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is the first book in her off-campus series. Um, I love L. Kennedy. She wrote Top Secret. She co-wrote Top Secret. Um, there's a link in the description box below, and it ended up being one of my favorite reads of 2019. It was also a new adult college romance. I started the spin-off of this series with the first book, The Chase, um, but I have not read The Deal, so I'm exceptionally excited for this. I think it's like a jock nerd girl tutor thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's gonna help her make the other guy jealous, so that's a classic trope. As long as it's done well, I will really love this. And the second book on my new adult TBR for the season is going to be Fever Pitch by Heidi Cullinan. Um, similarly, Heidi Cullinan wrote my one of my other favorite books of 2019, which was Love Lessons and... Why did the name just go right out of my head? Well, when I remember, I'll put it here, um, but it was Love Lessons and the third book in this series, and I, my library doesn't have book two, so I bought it. Um, it it's a male-male romance series, and it is absolutely fantastic. They're in college. The first book, they're roommates, and the, the friends to lovers aspect was just absolutely incredible. They were like an old married couple before they even like recognized that there was something between them. It was absolutely adorable. The third book was a little bit more intense. It handled um, disability and drug use and um, a lot of transphobia with one of their friends and it was also an incredible incredible read so I can't wait to see what Heidi cooks up for this one and actually I do have an amendment to make um, one more new adult that I will be rereading this year is going to be the Foxhole Court series by Nora Sakovic and if you've been around a while you know that this was my favorite book of 2019 absolutely incredible. It's a new adult. There's mafia connections. It's There's a boy um, lying about his identity because he's on the run and he gets recruited by an EXE team. And when I say that it's E-X-Y, um, it's a fictional sport that I want to be real so badly because it sounds amazing. It's hockey and lacrosse with a little bit of soccer thrown in. So it's intense. It's aggressive and it is absolutely incredible this team of found family is they're all just so soft and well Andrew is not soft Andrew is the opposite of soft but it handles so much and this book is an independently published book it is quite raw it's not well edited there are you know it's not perfect but I the characters in this book I read this seven times last year and I have not let myself read it this year yet um, so as a reward, I'm going to let myself read it this fall, so I didn't want to, you know, read it too many times and let the bloom go off the rose there. But every time I read it, I have to immediately reread it again. It's just an absolutely incredible series. It's not for everyone. This book has every trigger content warning you can imagine. Feel free to message me if you want to know the particulars, but um, everything happens in this series, even though the first book is quite short, the rest of them are not. First book is also free on Kindle. The rest are 99 cents, so it's a no-risk plunge, really. For the second genre set, I do also only have one book, and it's going to be a mystery read. Um, I love mysteries, I love thrillers, I love them a lot, um, but I struggle to find one that I that really hooks me. Um, for a mystery, it has to be like really immersive and intricate and kind of complicated and I typically like there to be magic involved so most of the mysteries that I read are urban fantasies um 
in disguise. So, but this one is, has no magic involved, and that's going to be The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Meg with Books, a booktuber here, I'll link her below, has been obsessing over this book all year. I've seen so much about it. It sounds like a good old Agatha Christie where the wedding party I believe is on an island and somebody gets killed and they know it's one of the wedding party people but they can't figure out who and people keep dying. So sounds like the perfect October read. I'm super excited. Speaking of YA paranormal, the Beautiful by Renee Audier. The second book, The Damned, came out this year, and I still had not read The Beautiful, so it's definitely gonna happen this year. Definitely. <laughs> I don't really know much about this. I know it's like a gritty underbelly of New Orleans. There's vampires and glitz, um, except I don't really think there's too many vampires in the first book. I think they really come into play in the second book, but otherwise I don't really know what's going on, and I think I want to keep it that way. Going into these kinds of books blinded is always is usually a good idea. This is kind of giving me um, Holly Black vibes with um, the cold hand, the the cold. There's a hand on the cut. The coldest girl in Cold Town. <laughs> I'm really getting those vibes from this book. To absolutely no one's surprise, Ninth House, <laughs> another book that came out last fall with the beautiful that I have not read. It's like a dark academia, secret society, magical thing. Um, so there's this girl, she wakes up and she um, gets invited to, look at the way that that snake just, oh, hello. Oh. Um, she's supposed to spy on the secret societies of Yale. So it is a college romance, but it's like, I think largely written for a YA audience. Um, so it's got that, you know, underbelly, gritty feel, and people say that this is dark, um, I think it's darker, <laughs> I read a lot of, like, dark romance, like, Pepper Winners, Penelope Douglas, I don't think this is that, I think it's just a little bit darker than your typical YA fantasy, so I'm keeping my expectations pretty low, um, but I'm enormously excited for this. I think there's magic, I have not been able to confirm that and I haven't really wanted to. And then another book that everyone is talking about lately, Serpent and Dove! There's a witch, there's a witch hunter, there's a marriage of convenience, they hate each other. That's all I know. That's kind of just what I've gleaned from it. It's a debut that everyone's talking about. Everyone's talking about the second book. Um, I know multiple people have bought multiple copies of book two, so kudos to you for having money. <laughs> I have not bought book two. Um, I did join a read-along for this last month and I didn't quite get to it, um, so I'm so sorry for that. Ooh, ladies were lovely. It wasn't you, it was me, but I definitely want to make sure that I'm getting to this this fall. I need to because it... I'm having FOMO! A witch and a win- like I love witch books! I love forced marriages. Ooh. No, no, no. Maybe we shouldn't say that. Uh, marriage of convenience? Fake relationship type things? My jam. Next is something that I've been trying to do for about 15 months now. Like almost a year and a half. Why did I say 15 months? I've been trying to reread The Raven Cycle since rumors of Fall Down the Hawk started happening. Um, I bought Fall Down the Hawk last fall. I got a whole subscription box for it. Haven't read either one of these. Like, I love Maggie Steve Otter. Like, I definitely forgot how incredible she is. I read The Scorpio Races um, this past spring, and it's one of my favorite books of the year right now. It was incredible. The writing was so lyrical and daring and I need to stop talking about her writing. It was so good. So I'm even, so I was really nervous to read this because I was a little disappointed with the end of The Raven King. Admittedly, it was not as much as I would have hoped, but um, I still love the Gangzi. The characters just, oh, such a special place in my heart. Ronan and Adam, I need them. I love them so much. 
And yes, for some reason, I'm super terrified of renaming these books. So it's definitely gonna happen. I've made a rule. I'm not allowed to watch Halloween Town until I read the Steve Otter books. So now that I'm properly motivated, hopefully it'll happen. And actually, um, I did leave out a couple books. Um, I forgot that I was gonna cover dark romance in this video as well. Um, so first of all, the Gathering of Dragons series, you may have seen these around, A Touch of Snow and A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Milla Vane. I got these in the Bay Crate box this, I think it was September's, it might have been August, I, it was September's box. I got it in Bay Crate's September box and I am so excited to read these. <laughs> I know nothing about what they're about. Um, Western Realms, Embroiled in War tenuous alliances between the barbarians and the kingdoms until the barbarian king and queen are slain in an act of bloody betrayal. The prince vows to avenge them, but it was the king's daughter who lured his parents to their deaths. He's determined to make her pay. <laughs> That's definitely the first time I've read that synopsis. It sounds so good! I'm actually like kind of teary. Yum! <laughs> like that's not the right word. But, oh, oh marriage and convenience, they hate each other. Uh huh. So there are two different couples in these two books, um, but this sounds so good. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank God. Another series that I am desperate to get to is the Corrupt series by Penelope Douglas. I did actually read the first book already, and I'm so excited to get to the next three. Penelope Douglas, she is the definition of dark romance. Like, girl knows where the barriers are and where the lines are that she shouldn't cross and she pretty much steps right over them, but she manages to do it in a way that it's not outrageous, that I don't get mad, and even though in some cases my inner feminist might be, you know, a, a little upset, um, they're such good stories. The first book of Corrupt is um, her best friend's brother. He's super dangerous, super dangerous. And she ends up living in his building when she moves to go to college to escape. And they're like rich people, so it's like his building. And um, he's gonna make her pay for something that happened a couple years before that landed his friends in jail. It was so deliciously dark. It was not right, but it was wonderful. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say on that. Then I am also determined to read the Gianna Darling books. These are a bit taboo because it's like an age gap romance. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about these, but they do sound people really seem to love them, so I'm excited to really love them. It's not right. It's not. But I'm really excited. <laughs> also, Sparrow by LJ Shen is another dark romance I'm desperately wanting to get through. This is like, I think it's a mafia? So he's like running the mafia, um, and he... I don't know if he kidnaps her. I love how I talk about this so casually. Um, somehow he gets like this girl that he knew from his childhood and quote unquote clips her wings. Um, so he's like, I don't know how to describe this book without sounding totally screwed up. Well, it is, I think that's fair. It's totally screwed up. So it's like a mafia fake relationship she doesn't really want to do it, but she has to for whatever reason. That. <laughs> Moving on to my favorite part of this video, the paranormal and urban fantasy reads that I'm super excited to get to. First is my Kate Daniels reread. This is by Ilana Andrews. It's a 10 book series. Um, I'm on book nine right now. I'm almost done. I think this is book nine. Yeah, Magic Binds. Um, does anybody else do this? Like take the jacket off when they read it. Um, I have book nine, I have book 10 to get to, which I'll probably start tomorrow. I'm so desperately in love with this series that I don't even know what to say. Ilana Andrews, they're just, there's a reason that Ilana Andrews is one of my top two favorite authors. 
ever. Ever. The world building is just so incredibly intricate and effortless. She, Kate herself, is evolves so much throughout the story. Like, it's actually incredible to watch her grow um, over the course of ten books, um, or nine, eight and a half as of now. Um, just <laughs> the sense of community, like all the different characters, they're all so different. They have these distinct set of personalities. I love them all. They're not all the same. They're, they're people. I, I, when I read these books, I genuinely feel like I'm among friends. This series, absolutely incredible. It's the perfect urban fantasy read to explore in the fall time. Um, it is 10 books, so it is a little bit more lengthy, which is why I'm also going to talk about the Hidden Legacy series. Um, this is the fourth book, Sapphire Flames. The new book, the fifth book, just released, and I just read it um, and reread this whole series. Um, unfortunately, I lent the other book out to my mom, so I don't have it to show you, but Sapphire Flames, it starts with Burn for me. It's not like a rom erotic uh, book. A lot of people get that impression because of the title and the clinch covers. It is an urban fantasy paranormal detective book. Um, it's an exceptionally slow burn romance. It's Burn for me because they're trying to find a pyromaniac. It is incredible hear me this this series like i love kate daniels i really do it's probably one of the most well-written series i've ever read but hidden legacy will always have a special place in my heart i've read the first book 14 times uh 15 now to date um so many times i could reread the series till the end of existence it's a little bit shorter so if you're looking to dip your toe into ilana andrews and urban fantasy this is the way to go. It, there's a world of magic. It's today's society if powerful people had magic, essentially. Um, oh. Incredible. So yes, I'm talking about it in my TBR video because I am reading it for fall even though I have already read it, but mostly because I need you to read it. I am planning an Ilana Andrews reading guide um, here soon. So keep an eye out for that. Then, of course, I'm also going to be reading Alpha Knight by Nalini Singh, as well as the other three books in this spinoff series. I've been rereading the Psy Changeling series all year. Um, it's 15 books, and then there's four now in the spinoff series, and it has been incredible. I can't wait to start my reread over. <laughs> like, I'm excited to finish it. Like, I want to read the other books first, but I'm also excited to read it all again. Um, that's why Ilana Andrews is also one of my top two favorite authors. Absolutely, same thing. Honestly, the world building, absolutely effortless, incredibly intricate. The politics, the mysteries, the ro I mean, the romance are wonderful. It's not as slow burn like an Ilana Andrews book because each book does cover a different couple, but it's not redundant. There is an overall series arc that is interesting and they're... Ah! <laughs> ah! I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but I am super excited to read this one. Um, super excited to meet the new pack that's introduced. Um, the nice thing about the Nalini Singh books is that it's not just werewolves. There are wolves, there are bears, there are leopards and jaguars, and then we don't get to focus on these, but the side characters are rats and hawks and buffalo and we actually do follow a water changeling there's dolphins and e eels and then the mercy thompson series is very all-encompassing so there's fae there's ghosts there's creatures of legend and myths there's she's a coyote shifter she lives next door to um the werewolf pack leader and falls in love with him and then there's vampires there's goals so there's really everything it's another you know they solve mysteries or she does um she solves mysteries but she's a normal person like us she has to get up and go to work every morning and open up her mechanic shop and she is just a very down-to-earth person and mercy just she's trying her best she is not a super sleuth except somehow she keeps getting embroiled in these incidents i am gonna mention one more book wolf song by tj clune This is my favorite book and favorite series of the year so far. Brother Song releases this fall, the fourth book in the series, and I believe the last. The series is incredible. It is incredible. 
It is so good! The only reason that I have kept an iron fist on my rereads of this book, because, you know, it is chunky, um, and I can't afford to stay up this late, because I know that I'll sit it and read it in one read, just like I have the others, but oh, it follows two neighbor boys. One um, is a little bit older, one's a little bit younger, so there is a bit of an age gap, but I promise, unlike with the dark romances, um, it is handled tastefully and you know it's not wrong at all I mean it's not a big age gap it's just like it, it's there um except the younger one is a werewolf <laughs> and ox is the human and he is an incredible human being and I know I'm describing this it's not a contemporary romance that has werewolves in it this is a di a a to the floor urban fantasy read that <sighs> this book is so atmospheric it just it breaks my like I, my heart got broken in this book so many times I'm like sobbing my eyes out it's so good so that's a lot of books to get through um lucky for me I've read some of them already which I mentioned um but it is a lot and I'm up for the challenge I'm very excited for this season of reading what are you reading this fall? Do you have any recommendations for me within those genres? I typically try to keep to those genres in the fall. What are you reading this season? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want any more information on any of these books, please remember that I did put together a blog post to correspond to this video. That breaks it down a little bit more and I go into a little bit more squeals and exclamation points on these books as well. That is all that I have for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day and you continue to have a wonderful season. Hopefully you will hear from me soon. I'm signing out. Have a good day. TBR! Are you excited for my TBR like I am? Four have fallen. But these are doing pretty good right now, so I'm gonna log off before this goes. Bye! <laughs> Thank you for watching.